at the Joint Countersmall Unmanned Airpath Systems University, or JCU, innovation is shaping the future of counter drone training and saving millions of dollars along the way. The plan was to use DJI Phantom drones, but at $3,100 per unit, by FY 2026, that would have cost nearly $12 million per year just for targets. JCU's solution? 3D printing. That morphed into what we now do uh, with the 3D printing capability, which allowed us to cut costs by as much as 91% for initial production and upwards of 99% for reutilization of aircraft. This is a significant savings to the government, but also revolutionizes how we train the students and how fast we can actually replicate threats as they change in theaters. The Fire Sensor of Excellence is at the forefront of developing target drones uh, so much so that the other centers of excellence, like Fort Benning uh, or Fort Novacell, have been able to reach out to us directly to receive our 3D schematics as well as our price points for ordering of parts. Really why we wanted to, you know, involve the, the uh, 3D printers, that way we can keep up with what we're seeing overseas. So currently I'm working on a prototype to be able to uh, drop a smoke grenade and drop one of our simulation rounds. That way we have the option of being able to drop smoke or drop a sim round for World War scenario. We integrate them by flying during the JFU operators course and their actual uh, target drones. So we'll fly them in the designated area and the soldiers that are in the operators course will actually have live engagements with the drones being able to shoot them down. What's unique is we're able to recover the drones and fix the broken parts, send them back up in the air depending on the damage, usually around 15 to 30 minutes. JCU also assists FCO's basic combat training and advanced individual training units by providing drones and pilots for their field exercises. For the Army, it's not just about saving money. It's about saving lives. And thanks to the team at JCU, soldiers are more prepared than ever to face the threats of tomorrow. Today we're doing an FPV live fire. So it's an autonomous vehicle. It's about the size of an SUV and it has two occupants inside. We're going to uh, be engaging it with our purpose-built trimmable system. That's the Sky Raider FPV drone uh, that is made and assembled by 173rd Sky Soldiers. We build our own drones because uh, that enables us to have a needs-based approach to procurement. We can very quickly uh, design our own capabilities and uh, meet the needs of commanders uh, and uh, fill capability gaps all the way down to the lowest level. My name is uh, Nate Whalen. I work for uh, Marathon Targets. Uh, we're out here supporting the 173rd's uh, FPV live fire exercise here in Pabrati training area in Lithuania. Uh, 173rd uh, asked us they needed a fast moving realistic vehicle target for their FPV live fire and uh, behind me is the uh, the T100 uh, vehicle which uh, which we normally use for uh, for small arms uh, small arms engagements uh, it looks moves and behaves like a full-size uh, vehicle and we brought it out here in support of the 173rd and they've engaging that with live rounds for their FPV live fire training um, the the training is going on for four days here. Uh, the vehicle is being used for both stationary and fast-moving uh, engagements, uh, and it's been uh, it's been really a, a privilege to support the 173rd in their training. Right here. Oh. 
supposed to drop. Oh, I'll see you many feet. Yep. What side do you put? the traffic on there. So the, the whole transforming a contact uh, concept, what we took that as is we took the mindset of transforming a contact. The, it's that adaptation mentality. It's the understanding how fast things are moving right now. So having a system that is completely designed from the ground up by soldiers based on mission needs is transforming contact. And that's really the, I think the foundation of this whole purpose-built assuredable system program Whatever the time is, we're building them to be perfect for that exact mission set. And if next week or two months from now it changes, then the way we build them will change. Captain Ronan Sefton, I'm the S2 for 1st Squadron, 2nd Cavalry Regiment. So the 2CR SUS program started a couple of months ago with the idea to, instead of procuring exquisite systems, that we would build our own. There's three main line of efforts in that 2CR SUS program. The first one is the short range reconnaissance master trainer rebluing. The second line of effort is the first person view or purpose built attributable system pilot course. And then the third line of effort is the build where we teach individuals to build drones. So we conduct a three day course where we qualify a master builders on the components of a drone and how to actually assemble one. The whole concept is we're designing them and constantly adapting them and there isn't this long like uh, research or sort of testing timeline that has to occur. To, to give you an idea, the first 3D printed drone we made was in the end of February and it's now mid-April and we have 30 systems completely built, all purpose built for different purposes. We're taking the lessons learned from Ukraine. So if you have a situation where the battlefield demands a different purpose, with these purpose-built systems, the idea of building them ourselves is if you want different capability, you can just outfit it with different equipment. I think we're learning that with how fast things are moving in the war right now in Ukraine and Russia, we can't become comfortable with the system doing everything for us. We have to be able to have the human element to adapt, right? Because that's what I think humans are good at is adapting under environmental stress. So the system is defined exactly by how we want it to be. It's not defining how we need to fly it. And that's the beauty of these two is, yes, it's harder to fly these, these drones, but 
they do exactly what the soldier tells it to do. So if you train the pilot well, then the drone will be capable rather than you need to find the most capable drone. We have a lot of extremely passionate people about this topic and it's nobody's job on paper. Uh, there is no drone builder MOS, but we have a lot of people who, particularly in 2CR, you know, who just are passionate about this stuff. And it's, it's all done by 2CR soldiers is, the, is kind of the big thing that I want to stress. These incredibly complicated engineering type activities with these drones are done by 2CR soldiers uh, exclusively. The design, the printing, the building, and the testing. Uh, we, we don't have any civilians assisting us. We just have some smart green suitors who've come in who've had particular skill sets. And that's kind of where 2CR is shining. I think we just have these people who are, who are just passionate about this. And that's the biggest thing. Using the same tie for my AGSU's for like three years. That's good. 73. 73. Today we are using small unmanned aircraft systems to uh, locate targets to call for artillery fire and also uh, to observe the fall of those rounds, make the required adjustments and to conduct the battle damage assessment. The drone itself provides its location. You can get in vicinity of or right over your target, get your location grid, call in that fire mission. Target location, uniform, kilo, five, seven, four. And then adjust four, the rounds based seven, on your observer six, location. Seven, We've nine, been using larger platform drones for years to do these kind of things uh, for targeting information. Small unmanned aircraft systems has uh, recently been added to that. It's uh, in development currently. These things are changing and advancing at a rapid rate, just like everything that really has to do with technology typically does. We need to adjust with the times as well. It's another enabler and it's another asset. It's another force multiplier. Greatly can increase your situational awareness at a lower echelon than I think ever historically. UAS, in a sense, it reduces risk to that observer, right? So we can push a UAS out so the observer himself can remain concealed or behind cover. UAS goes out, conducts the extraction of whatever data that it needs to, comes back. It's analyzed by that fire support channel and then it's processed. So on the tail end, when the round actually does impact, fire! you get that battle damage assessment. Yep. 
I'll go ahead and set up a mission. Yeah, so we do a little bit of the CUS. We have uh, some particles on there. Okay, well, there you go. Are these soft air tires? Are these soft air tires? Yeah, I got you. Just a few feet that way. That should be good. Engine started! <laughs> 